Hello, it's uh, Paul Beckwith at the uh, University of Ottawa. This is not a chess video, it's a... Uh, actually, today I'm going to talk about um, recent developments in the last week or two. Um, they're very disturbing um, on the uh, climate change front. So, um, it's the 24th of uh, March. Um, just yesterday, a uh, paper came out, uh, Ramsdorf um, et al. Man is on the paper. And it talks about a cold water anomaly um, just to the south of um, Greenland that has been persisting for a long period of time. And the paper looks at various types of evidence, including sea surface temperature in the area um, and some proxies and uh, other things. And it determines that this cold water anomaly has been very persistent and, um, you know, has actually built up um, since about, uh, you know, 1970 or so. Um, 75, you know, pretty bad. And then there was some recovery um, in the early 90s. And then more recently, um, the water pool has uh, become even colder. And this is being attributed to a slowing down of the Gulf Stream. So the Gulf Stream, which runs off the east coast of the U.S., carries water, uh, lots of warm water um, from southern latitudes uh, to higher northern latitudes. And it crosses the Atlantic Ocean and um, is responsible for the relatively mild climate in um, the United Kingdom and uh, Western Europe. Um, so there's been a significant slowing of the ocean water. Um, so and uh, there are ramifications of that um, as it flows up the coast, as the Gulf Stream flows up the coast, uh, the eastern coast of the U.S., uh, because of the Coriolis force pushing, pushing things to the right, um, there's Ekman flow, which pulls water away from the coast, and that's been the normal condition. So with the Gulf Stream uh, changing, actually impinging on the continental shelf, we had in 2009, 2010, 128 millimeter or slightly over five inch uh, sea level rise in the space of two years. Now, since the global average of sea level rise is about 3.4 millimeters per year, 128 millimeters in two years is, you know, a hugely significant um, event. Um, now, also correlated with that um, is the, there was a sharp transition in the Arctic sea ice thickness in about 2010. It dropped very, very sharply. So there is, it is possible that there's a connection um, to this Gulf Stream slowdown. Um, there was a paper um, published in BAMS in 2013, um, which, which uh, showed a plot of, of the um, AMOC, the Arctic Meridional Overturning Circulation Ocean Current, and it showed it actually slowing, even reversing um, in that year, um, 2010. So that, co that, that agrees with the most recent um, study. Um, you know, it fits in with that pattern. Um, so also the shifting of the Gulf Stream moves the distribution of warm and cold water. So there's been a lot of warm water sitting off the east coast of the U.S. So when the nor'easters come across, they pick up the moisture um, from the warmer water, there's higher evaporation, they pick up the moisture, and uh, as a result, they've, um, you know, it's flooded, well, flooded, it's, it's swamped the eastern seaboard of the U.S. and Canada uh, with massive amounts of, of snowfall. Um, and of course, there's been, you know, very cold um, the trough of the jet stream lying over lots of um, eastern North America, whereas the ridge has been over western North America. So the, the West has been exceptionally warm, the East has been exceptionally cold with all of the snow. Um, so, so this, um, if you followed some of my previous videos, you won't be too surprised at the fact that the ocean currents carrying heat from the equator poleward, in this case in the Northern Hemisphere, have decreased in strength. They're carrying less heat poleward and this all fits into the pattern of Arctic amplification. The high Arctic has warmed at least five to eight times faster 
than the global average. Um, the, the main reason for this Arctic amplification is the declining, the exponentially declining sea ice extent, the exponentially declining snow cover covering terrestrial parts of the Arctic, especially in the spring, and also the very rapid decline as shown um, in Jason Box's work on Greenland. Um, the albedo has been rapidly dropping um, over Greenland. And in fact, um, a few years ago, over 90% of the surface was undergoing melt. Um, so that adds melt ponds. And as the ice is removed, um, there, is, there is dirt and soot and black carbon exposed, further dropping the albedo. And this code, this, this um, makes sense um, in light of the NASA study that shows that the albedo of the entire Arctic region, um, as determined by a series instruments on satellites, has dropped from about 52% to 48% in the last 30 years. And I did see a study um, which was indicating that most of that was in the last 10 years. So because the Arctic is warming so quickly, you know, we've talked, I have talked and others have talked a lot about the jet stream slowing down and becoming wavier and causing this stuck and persistent weather. Um, so so there, there should be no surprise that the, our, the, the ocean currents are also slowing down um, with uh, ramifications. Uh, basically, there, the Arctic is warming because of increased solar absorption, because the whole region is darkening. So there's less need for heat transport there from the equator. Um, so the, there's a slowdown in the heat transport in both the atmosphere, and that's reflected in wavy jet streams and extreme weather events, um, and also in the oceans, which, um, are, are, uh, which this most recent study is showing. So this is uh, extremely concerning. Uh, because more heat, because um, the Arctic's heating from more solar radiation, there's less heat transport up there from the equator. So therefore, you know, the, the equator's warming um, a lot, not a lot. You know, the extra heat at the equator is going into, mostly into evaporation, um, creating more humid conditions, but a lot of the heat is also moving southward. And it's getting down as far as Australia, and it's moving by jet streams, and it's moving by the atmospheric winds and also by um, the ocean currents. So it's getting down as far as Australia. Australia is baking, but it does strengthen the um, winds and ocean currents that circumvent um, Antarctica. And because of the Coriolis force being directed to the left in the uh, southern hemisphere, um, it's actually pulling um, water and sea ice away from Antarctica in the winter. So the sea ice in Antarctica has been growing at about 1.5% per decade. Um, and has, and recently this, um, this uh, you know, Antarctic winter um, re reached um, uh, record um, extent. And then, and then uh, you know, each summer it declines back very close to the coastline. So you need to look at the whole climate system, and the whole climate system is undergoing a rapid transition, uh, which I've talked about for a long time. Um, it's basically abrupt climate change. The, the response of the system is far exceeding the, um, the, uh, what you'd expect from, from uh, the forcings. Um, some other very worrying things, um, of course, is uh, recently is there's underwater channels going to East Antarctica, which are help, which are which are mechanisms to bring warm ocean water underneath the ice to to um, make the melt rates faster. So East Antarctica is not as solid as we thought. It's more precarious, um, and of course, melt rates on Greenland and Antarctica are increasing rapidly, almost, with almost a doubling rate of recorded uh, reported melt rates of about five to seven years, something like that. So thus, uh, you know, I discussed that in a video asking, can we reach seven meters of global sea level rise by 2070? And I think the answer to that is yes. Also very, very worrying is a report about the Amazon rainforest. Um, it's a huge sink for greenhouse gases for carbon dioxide. And um, with drought there and less tree growth and uh, removal of uh, deforestation, the sink 
the, the carbon sink of the Amazon rainforest is reported to have decreased by about one third, by about 33% in the last decade. Um, a while ago, um, it was reported that the carbon absorption, um, the carbon sink in European forests was, was saturating. So these are all worrying things. Um, there was a report that said the global emissions um, tapered off in 2014 compared to 2013, but the CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere have still been strongly rising. Um, so part of that reason may be a reduction of the sinks. So we're definitely facing terrible consequences with this destabilization of climate. And the more the climate destabilizes, the more the um, mental uh, state and psychology of the climate deniers, including lots of politicians, destabilizes. Um, so they start trying to push the, the terrorism card over and over uh, to distract people from the, very, the real, very important issues that are much more important um, and that will affect everybody's life on this planet. So I'll, I'll, I'll end off here. Thank you. Thank you.